Today, let's talk about Power Apps, what it is, who it's for, and what you can do with it. We'll also create a simple app together just so you can get started and see the potential of this power tool. Power Apps are custom apps that you create for your work and for your organization, but they aren't apps that you sell on the App Store. Why would you need these? Because they make it easier for you to do some tasks. They're apps. They're meant for your phone, for your tablet, or for the web. And because your phone already has a lot of inbuilt functionality, like camera and microphone, you can combine this with Power Apps. So let's set up a very simple app together. Now, you can create apps from different places. You can do it by going to office.com. You can also go directly to the Power Apps website. You can also create your own Power App directly from Teams. In this case, I'm going to go to office.com, log in with my Microsoft account, and scroll down to find Power Apps. Now, if you don't see it on this list, just click on All Apps here, and you're going to see Power Apps. You can also search for it up here. Select it and it's gonna take you to the Power Apps workspace. Now this is structured in a very similar way as Power Automate. The easiest way to get started creating your app is to already have some data somewhere else. You can have it in SharePoint lists, you can have it in Excel online, SQL, common data service, and so on. Now, since we're a big fan of Excel here, I'm gonna create the first app using data from Excel. Now, before I do this, I just want to show you my Excel file. That file has a table, so that's a requirement. This table, in my case, is called Tasks, and it only has four columns. Priority of the task, the task itself, the person, and a deadline. I want to transform this sheet into an app. So I'm going to close that off and select Excel Online here. Now, this is a good way to get started with Power Apps, but if you're creating apps for your organization, I don't recommend that you use Excel as a data source. Now, the reason for this is that you can only use Excel that's on your OneDrive for Business, so not on SharePoint. It's also limited in the number of rows that it can show on the app. And if anyone has that file open in the background, they're going to lock it so that your app doesn't work. So as an alternative, it's always best to start with a SharePoint list instead. In this case, I'm going to use an Excel file that's in my OneDrive for Business. That file is in this folder called Project Tasks. Now Power Apps is going to take a look at all the tables in that file. There is only one table called Tasks, and I'm going to connect to that. Now this is where all the magic happens. Power Apps is going to create a fully functioning app based on those two lines of data that I had. And that final app is going to look like this. I'm going to zoom in so that you can see it better. These are my two rows of data. It already added a bunch of functionality like the ability to search for items, the ability to add a new row of data to sort and to refresh. Now to be able to interact with this as if it's an app and to test the app, you can use the shortcut key F5 or click on this button. Here we can try it out. If I click on this, it's going to take me to the details. I see the deadline, person, priority, and task. I have the ability to edit this item or to go back. I can add a new item here. So I'm going to click on the plus. For the date, I immediately get this calendar picker, which is great because Power Apps has recognized that I have a date field and it's automatically given me the ability to pick the date from a calendar. I can add a new person responsible for this, whether this is a priority or not, and the name of the task. To submit this and add this line to our Excel table, I'm going to click on Submit Item. Okay, so this is how the app currently functions if we would use this on the phone. Now, just so that I can show you this item was actually added, let me open up the Excel file, and that's the line that we just added. Notice that Power Apps automatically added a new column as well. Now, here's something you have to take care of. If you're using an Excel file as your source, that file can't be open while someone is editing or adding data in the app. That's why it's not recommended to use Excel as a source. 
especially not if you're sharing your app with a lot of people. To exit the app view, just click on the X here and we go back to the Power App Work area. Now let's take a look at the different options we have here. There are a lot of formatting options that we can do. So notice when I click on the different objects, they get highlighted on the side here and I have the ability to change the formatting of this. So for the fill color, for example, for our search items, let's change that to a light gray. Let's also change the color of the banner here. Now, sometimes it's difficult to select the object that you want. That's when you can select it from the side pane here. Down here, we have the rectangular quick action bar. That's the correct object I want to select. I'm going to change the fill color to a reddish color. So as you can see, any object that we have here, we can select it on the side pane. Now, how does the side pane look? The moment we connect it to our data source, it created three different screens. One is the browse screen. That's the first screen that we see in the app. Then we have the detail screen. That's the screen that comes up when we make a selection from our browse screen. And last is the edit screen. This is the screen you get if you edit something from the detail. So when you select this, you go to here, or if you select the plus from the browse screen, you also come to this screen here that's empty in that case and gives you the ability to add new items. On the right hand side, you get the properties of each object. You can adjust the position, size, color, border. You can make objects invisible, for example. And these properties can be different depending on the type of object that you select. Under advanced, you have more options. These are generally your control options. For example, what do you want to happen when the user updates the field? And as you can see, the formulas here are actually quite similar to Excel formulas. So for us Excel users, it's quite easy to get the hang of this. Let's actually do that. Let's update the person text field here. And instead of having a text field, I want to have a drop down list. To be able to do that, I can edit these controls and edit the cards. So I'm going to click on the edit form object here, go to properties and edit the fields. Here I can also see how the fields are organized and I can change the order. So for example, I want to bring the task up. I'm just going to click and drag it up. Next, I want to make the person a dropdown. So let's expand this field. Under control type, I have edit text. Just click on it and change it to allowed values instead. Now we need to give it the type of values that are allowed. So I'm going to click this object that is now a dropdown list, go to advanced and add the items I want in there. But notice it's locked. Before I can do that, I need to unlock this so I can customize it the way I need. Now under items, I'm going to change that, add square brackets and put the names in quotation marks. So I want Lily, comma, Tim, comma, Sarah and close the square bracket. Let's also change something else. Instead of priority, yes or no, I want to add a checkbox instead. So I'm going to select the box here. Notice it's called data card value six. That's the name of the object. I'm going to delete that just by clicking on the delete button. But delete is not removing this because the object is locked. First, I need to unlock it. Now you can unlock it from this panel here, but you also have the ability to unlock by clicking on more options and unlocking the item. Now I can delete this. Let's expand this again. And we're going to take care of these X's here in a second. But first, let's insert a checkbox. To do that, go to insert. Under input, I have all these choices. In my case, I need a checkbox. I'm going to rename it to priority. Now I don't need the label here, so I'm going to select that and from the properties window, I'm just going to make it invisible. Okay, so, so far so good. Now we need to take care of a few things. One is that we need to make sure that when there's a check mark here, 
we type a yes on the Excel side, and if there is no check mark, we type a no. And we also have to take care of these. What these are, are basically the formulas that are behind this object. Data card value 6.txt basically wrote the text to our Excel file. We need to change this to our function. And guess what function this is? It's an if function. If this checkbox, the name of it is checkbox1. So if checkbox1 dot value equals true, and since we know from Excel that the default check is for true, we don't actually have to type this out. If it's true, then we want yes in the Excel file, else we want no. Close bracket and control enter. And we're going to test this in a second. Our first error is gone. Let's take care of the second error. This one is related to the error message here, and it has to do with the size of our previous control. So all we need to do here is just change this name to checkbox one instead, and also on this side here. Okay, so, so far so good. Now we're going to test this in a second, but before we do that, let's also make another adjustment to this. So remember, all of this was in the edit screen side. Let's go back to browse screen and see how our app looks the moment we open it up. We see the name of the person, then we see whether it's a priority and the task. What if I don't want all this information on the app? Well, you can easily adjust that in the properties. Just select the area here. This is your browse gallery. You can update the layout instead of showing everything here, just to show the title instead. Now here it took the name of the person as the title. I don't want that. So I'm going to edit this. And instead of person, I want to see the task. Okay, so now that looks better. Now take a look at the formula bar. It has an automatic sorting sort by columns and it's sorting currently by person. I can change that and sort this by another column like deadline. Okay, so that's a simple app here. Take a look at all the other options you have under insert. You can insert media, camera, barcode scanner, video. You can record audio with your phone, add a picture and so on. You also have the ability to add a lot of icons here that you can use on your app. Once you add an icon or control, you need to add an action to it. That action can be, for example, to navigate to another screen. It can run an action on select, and you can also add your flows here so that you can click a button and a whole Power Automate flow is gonna get executed. Now, before I switch to App View to see our new changes, I wanna show you something else. You can also interact directly with your app by holding down the Alt key and clicking on a button here. So for example, let's say I want to refresh this. If I hold on Alt, the refresh button becomes clickable. If I let go of Alt and click on this, I just see the formula that's behind this. Okay, so this way, if I hold on Alt, I can click on this, go to the next page, hold on Alt, click on back to go back. Okay, so before we publish this, let's quickly test this. I'm going to create a new item. Let's select the date to be the 14th, the task itself, the person responsible, and yes, this is a priority. I'm going to submit this. I can also sort this in ascending or descending order. So remember the sort order is the deadline in this case. Okay, so, so far so good. Let's bring up Excel to see our changes. And that's how things look on the Excel side. Priority became a yes. We have our task, we have the person's name and the deadline. As a last step, let's go ahead and save this. So I'm going to go to file and save. You can save it to the cloud or to the computer. I'm going to give this app a name and save it. After you save the app, you want to share it with others. To do that, click on share. Here you have the option to add individual email addresses or if you want to make it available to everyone in your organization, just type in everyone. You can give them the ability to become a co-owner if you want, or just the ability to use the app. But here's something you have to keep in mind. Because the underlying file is an Excel file, 
they have to be given permission to the Excel files separately as well. Okay, otherwise they wouldn't be able to use this. I'm gonna click on share. All permissions were saved successfully and close this. Here you also get the web link to the app so that you can use it over the web. You also have the ability to use it on your phone by downloading Power Apps or by adding your app to Teams. This way you can directly use it inside Teams. A better alternative to using Excel as data source is to use SharePoint lists. So here I have a simple list and I'm going to create a quick app based on that list. So this is very similar to what we had in Excel. I'm going to go to Power Apps. As data source, I'm going to go with SharePoint. Now I can connect to a SharePoint site and choose a list from that site. Power Apps is going to go ahead and create the app, but this time there is a big advantage to using lists. And that's the data type that automatically comes with it. Because in lists, you can also have choices and drop down selections. That's automatically picked up by Power Apps. Now we can check this. If I go to App View here and I go to Edit an Item, Notice I have a drop down for priority. So in this case, I can pick whether something is priority one or priority two. I also can look for the username of a person. Just type in a part of the name and you get your selection here. Okay, so in addition to the other benefits that we get, that our data isn't locked, if someone has the Excel file open, that we're not limited to the number of rows, SharePoint lists save us a lot of time when it comes to setting up the app. Before we wrap up, I want to show you how you can add your app to Teams. This is the first app that we created, which is connected to an Excel file. I'm going to click on more commands, add to Teams. Here I can review and download the app as a zip file and then upload it as a custom app to Teams. So let's click on download app to get the zip file. That's it downloading here. Now let's switch to Teams. Go to Apps, scroll all the way down, and upload a custom app. If you don't see this option, that's because you don't have the right to upload a custom app. In that case, you can submit your app to the app catalog, and once IT takes a look at it and approves it, it's going to be available for apps built for your organization. In this case, I have the right, so I'm going to upload the app. That's the zip file. Click on Open. Now I can add the app directly to Teams, or click on this drop down, add it to a specific team or to a chat. I'm going to add it to a team. Here I can type a team or a channel name. I'm going to add it to the general channel in finance and select set up a tab. We then get to this dialog box where we can see a description. If we added a good one about the project task app that we're adding, we can post to the channel about the tab and then click on save. This is going to add our app right here and make it available for anyone who's in this channel. But remember, the underlying data for this one is Excel. So for this to work properly for everyone, we have to make sure that they all have access to the Excel file. If you're using a SharePoint list, they should all have access to that SharePoint list. To use the app on the phone, just open it up. I can easily add a new task. Let's pick the date, type the task, select the person, and then add this. And this is automatically going to create a new line in my Excel table. Now, I'm curious what you think about Power Apps. Is this something that you think can be useful at your work? Can you see it being used for certain tasks? Let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give that thumbs up. And if you're new here and you haven't subscribed to this channel, consider subscribing before you leave. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.